Hi, this is Mary Wisner from the Gallagher Law Library. You know, source gathering used to mean getting piles and piles of books, everything that an author cited. Well, getting the piles of books is a lot harder now that uh, the COVID crisis means that libraries around campus and around the country are shut down. But carry on. There are ways to do it using electronic versions of books. This video will show you how. Thomas Jefferson wrote, a lawyer without books would be like a workman without tools. He was America's first lawyer president. He was also a man who profited from and sustained the institution of slavery. But let's focus during this lesson on the sentiment that a lawyer really needs books to do the lawyer's work. There are many ways to site check without printed books. There are ebooks that are available through the library catalog. They have different providers, different formats, sometimes different licensing. Ebooks are available on Hein Online. There are treatises and practice guides on Westlaw, Lexis, and Bloomberg Law. Sometimes you can get what you need by using Google Books or Amazon. How can I confirm the Jefferson quotation? I remember reading it in the Oxford Dictionary of American Legal Quotations, but the library is closed. I happen to own a personal copy of the Oxford Dictionary of American Legal Quotations, but it's in my office. I know the library has collections of presidential papers, but they're in print and the library is closed. I went to Google Books, which is just books.google.com, and I searched for lawyer without books, workman without tools. And right away, I got the passage I needed uh, up here on the second line for a lawyer without books would be like a workman without tools. Terrific. That's what I needed. It's from what looks like a pretty good source, Thomas Jefferson Writings from the Library of America. And I can almost cite the whole thing, but I'm missing the page number. Google Books didn't show me the page. I can go to the University Library's catalog and look for that book, and I see that the library has it as a print book, but notice this line that says there's also online access. The online access is through something called the Hathi Trust Emergency Library. That just means that right now we do have access to it. In the Hathi Trust Digital Library, I can run a search for the terms, I get to the passage, and then they give me the page number, and I can read the passage in context. Now I have a citation, letter from Thomas Jefferson to Thomas Turpin, February 5th, 1779, comma, in Thomas Jefferson, writings, 739, which is the page the letter starts on, comma, 740, the place that I'm quoting, Merrill D. Peterson, editor, 1984. I went back and forth on whether to give Merrill D. Peterson credit. He or she isn't listed as an editor on the title page, but there is this note on the next page. If you're curious about the Hathi Trust, here's a guide from the university libraries where you can read about it. Bottom line is, right now we have access to this book. Now the library catalog is a great place to go to find print books and also electronic resources. The Gallagher Catalog, which is the default when you go to the catalog from our homepage, lists physical items in the law library plus ebooks. The University Libraries Catalog includes everything in the whole UW system, print and electronic. Let's take a look at Derek Bell, Faces at the Bottom of the Well. This is a classic of critical race theory. Here we are at our library's homepage. I can type in a quick search, Derek Bell Faces. I find three editions, an ebook, a print book with temporary online access, and a print book that is checked out. Let's look at the ebook's online access. It includes that Hathi Trust again. One user is the license. 
This one, ACLS Humanities eBooks, is a package that the university libraries bought. The license terms says that we can have unlimited users. That means you can look at it, your editor can look at it, your editor's editor can look at it, your best friend can look at it. That's a really generous license. So we can go through this. and we can read or download any of the chapters. Here's another book, Annette Gordon-Reed, The Hemingses of Monticello, An American Family. Suppose I'm working on an article whose author quotes this passage. Jefferson came to Paris with a self-image as the revolutionary author of the Declaration of Independence and valued his connection to some of the philosophes of French society who shared his views on the natural liberty of all mankind and took seriously his denunciations of slavery. Let's start by going to the library catalog. This time, instead of being at the Law Library homepage, we're in the library catalog. I'm going to search for UW Libraries just to show you what that looks like. Annette. Gordon Reed Hemingses. We find out that it's available on campus, but only in print. Oh man, what do we do? Well, one thing we can do is go to Google Books. In Google Books, we can search for Annette Gordon read Hemingses, and since I know I'm looking for that passage that says something about the philosophes and slavery, I can search for that. Annette Gordon Reed, Hemingses, Philosophes, Slavery. Well, title page had Hemingses. That page has slavery. And here is our passage. It's page 185. Jefferson came to Paris with a self-image as the revolutionary author of the Declaration of Independence and valued his connection to some of the philosophes of French society, denunciations of slavery, and so on. So we have the passage we need. Uh, Google Books doesn't have the whole book. If you go through it, you'll find that it skips some pages, but it had what we needed. So this is terrific. Another thing we can do is go to Amazon. Here we are in Amazon, and you'll notice that I'm signed in because it says, Hello, Mary. I can search for Annette Gordon Reed, and here is her book, The Hemingses of Monticello, and Amazon gives us this little promise, look inside. I can search Philosophes, and it picks up philosophical, which is not what I was looking at for, but then here we go, page 185, Jefferson came to Paris with a self-image as the revolutionary author of the Declaration of Independence. So two different ways I was able to confirm the author's quotation. Just to remind you what we did, we looked in the catalog, there was no ebook available. We looked in Google Books, we found the passage, we looked in Amazon, and we found the passage. Here's another book to try. Barbara Lindemann, Employment Discrimination Law. Let's go to the catalog. And this one has different editions. Let's look at this top one. 2012, it has online access. And there's a note that it's in Bloomberg Law 
which is only available to UW Law School students, faculty, and staff. If you haven't already set up your Bloomberg account, I encourage you to do that. So we go here, and if you remember, the catalog said this is the 2012 edition. But let's click on Current Through. This is current through June 2018 with some Supreme Court decisions for the next year, and it's copyright 2020. So even though we were in the catalog and it promised us a 2012 book, we actually have a book that's much more current. Now the catalog does not include everything you have access to. We saw that it included a book that's in Bloomberg Law. It does not include treatises in Lexis. If you know the publisher of a book, watch for books that are published by Lexis or Matthew Bender, which is a publisher that was bought out by Lexis. It does not include treatises in Westlaw. Watch for the publisher Thomson Reuters or West Publishing. It does not include books that are in West Academic Study Aids. Remember, West Academic is not the same as Westlaw. They have the first syllable in common, and years ago the companies were related, but they are not connected. What's in West Academic, Hornbooks and Nutshells and Gilberts, is not in Westlaw, and vice versa. If you know a publisher, look for West Academic or Foundation Press. Some books that are in Hein Online are in the catalog, and some are not. Look for classics, old books like Blackstone or Oliver Wendell Holmes, and certain others. A major treatise on civil procedure is called Moore's Federal Practice. It's published by Matthew Bender, and you'll see most of the volumes say Matthew Bender, but after Matthew Bender was bought out by Lexis, they started putting Lexis on the spine. A good way to find treatises that are in Lexis is to simply log into Lexis and type it in. Moore's Federal, and it comes right up that they have Moore's Federal Practice, Civil, and we have a table of contents that we can browse or we could search the treatise. If you cite a treatise from Bloomberg, Lexis, or Westlaw, by the way, you be sure to consult the Blue Book Rule 15.9. Another example, Sheldon Namod, Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Litigation, The Law of Section 1983. This is published by Thomson Reuters. If you knew that, that would be a hint to try Westlaw. But sometimes you can try and look, is it in Bloomberg? No. Is it in Lexis? No. Is it in Westlaw? Yes. Here's how that goes. So in Westlaw, I have to sign in, and I can search for the title, Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Litigation. And there's our book, and again we have a table of contents, or we could search within the book. So how about this book, Albert J. Beveridge, Abraham Lincoln a classic four-volume biography of our 16th president. It is what you might term a classic, and it's old enough to be out of copyright, which makes it likely that you can find it in various places like Google Books. I'd like to show it to you in Hein Online. There are different ways to get around Hein Online. One way is to use the catalog feature at the top, B-E-V-E-R-I-D-G-E, -E -E, Abraham Lincoln, and here we have the four-volume set on Abraham Lincoln, and we find out that it's in different components of Hein Online. It's in the Legal Classics Library, it's in the U.S. Presidential Library, it's in Spinelli's Law Library Reference Shelf. So we can find this book in different ways. Now here's a newer one. Gerda Lerner, The Grimke Sisters from South Carolina, Pioneers for Women's Rights and Abolition. The revised edition was 2004. And ordinarily, 
you know, that's not out of copyright, but it's in the University of North Carolina Press. Hein Online has licensed a lot of law-related and history-related books from the University of North Carolina Press. So again, let's go to the catalog. And we find that this one is in three different collections. It's in the Women in the Law collection, the Slavery in America and the World collection, and the UNC Press Law Publications. And you can read the whole book in Hein Online. So let's recap what we've done today. Not having access to the millions of books in campus libraries is a drag. I agree. Stupid pandemic. But take heart. You can often find what you need. You can find ebooks in the catalog. You can use Google Books and Amazon's Look Inside feature. You can often find books in Bloomberg Law, Lexis, or Westlaw. And there are a lot of ebooks in Hein Online. For more about University Libraries ebooks, see this guide. This has been Mary Wisner from the Gallagher Law Library. Please see our website for library services, research guides, and more. The URL is lib.law.uw.edu.